after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome in to a brand new episode of Moving the Goalposts on the on the Empty the Bench Network. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash ETB Network. Um, you could also find us at etbpodcasts.com. Uh, you can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. On on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at MTGP at MTGP ETB. And you can follow, uh, you can follow at ETB network. You can follow me on Twitter at Nick Demart um, on uh, Twitter uh, and, you know, the empty the bench network on YouTube uh, at ETB network on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, all right. So make sure to like and subscribe. All right. So there is a very uh, well. It, so I, I feel a little late on this, um, but there is, of course, as we could have easily predicted, there was going to be a lot of controversy in this whole uh, college football playoff rankings thing. It's. Uh, Okay, so this whole thing is very, how do I say this? Very divisive amongst college football fans. Um, Florida State left out because of their quarterback, because of Jordan Travis getting injured and all that. Um, it's sparked a lot of online debate about, you know, you know, uh, teams, get, uh, teams getting in, teams getting left out, all that. Um Many people are arguing it's an injustice. Many people are arguing it's corrupt. Uh, many people are arguing a lot of things. Um, and I know we're going to argue about this because we did last week. Um, my view is the committee made the right decision. Not only – I think they made the right decision uh, based on what I saw from Florida State. I feel awful for Florida State, by the way. Let, let me just – Make a disclaimer. I feel awful for Florida State fans. I feel awful for Jordan Travis. I feel awful for Florida State and Mike Norvell. I feel awful for all of them. And they were very much deserving of a playoff spot. Um, that doesn't mean they made the wrong decision. Um, I, I, I absolutely do feel bad for them. Um, all right, you can take this it is, away. This is the worst decision, I think, in the history of sports maybe ever. This Florida State won every single game. They won a Power Five conference. They won the Power Five conference championship game. They handed LSU their worst loss of the season early in the season. They beat Clemson at Clemson. They didn't lose a game, most importantly. They won a Power Five conference. There was two teams put ahead of them that lost a game. Uh, this is a joke. Alabama was put in clearly to play Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Um, this is a joke. I mean, I, I don't understand what else they could do. This is a joke of 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 uh, of the sport. I mean, they thirteen and zero, and they won a Power Five conference. And the explanation that they gave was that basically what you said that they didn't think Florida State was that good without the quarterback, but they didn't lose a game, and also they ranked them ahead of Georgia in the final rankings. So I don't understand how that make explanation makes sense. If they thought they were that bad, then how are they ranked ahead of Georgia? Um. Okay. That part, that last part, I kind of understand. Maybe if anything, I would have ranked them below Georgia. Um, I, I think that 
all of okay that, that that's a fair point if you want to argue okay they're ranked ahead of georgia maybe uh they shouldn't have been ranked ahead of georgia okay fine i mean that's more an argument against the reason it, that's more of an argument against like uh it, you could also just as easily argue that that's why they should be lower in the rankings or okay fine um this is the right decision absolutely this is the right decision that the committee made absolutely um Florida State was not the same team without Jordan Travis, which is kind of important. Um, okay. Like I said last week, when it comes to college football playoff rankings, it is a mix of a whole bunch of things does, and ultimately, you know, a balance of teams that are the most deserving and the best. And I think most people would agree that there should be some type of, I don't know, some type of like, mixture of the two things uh when it comes to determining the best when it comes to determining the best teams or the most you know the top four teams um because you know you, you don't want i think everybody ultimately agrees with that even though some people say it should be the most deserving other people say it should be the best ultimately it's something everybody kind of agrees it should be something in the middle um if you think it should only be the best then just vegas odds makers would just determine that and the results wouldn't matter if you only want it to be the most deserving. Well, obviously you don't want that. Like obviously then you wouldn't, you're not going to get, you know, good games or whatever. Um, but the point is, is that Florida, this is not in any way unusual of what the committee did. Um, they do this a lot. Whenever quarterbacks get injured or no, something. They've, of- never put, they've never put a power five undefeated team under teams of the loss. You're right. They they haven't done it. You're right. That hasn't happened because of this current situation, uh, because they haven't been in this current situation ever. I, I mean, but I don't. What I'm saying is that the procedure is not any different uh, than what it always has been, which is that the committee always, and it, it's not just in football. They do this in basketball too, and I assume any other sport, any other college sport where committees do rankings, is that they do reevaluate in the face of a very big injury, which a quarterback would Jordan Travis is the worst injury that could have happened to any team in college football. Currently it is, that's just a fact and see how that affects the team moving forward because a huge part of the rankings is expectations and looking at your body of work and what that will look like come the playoffs. Um, what you have to remember is, of course, they take into account the fact that Florida State is undefeated. If they weren't undefeated, they would not even be a top 10 team. Of course, it matters that they're undefeated. But it also matters that like it also matters that they're expect that they're not judging the same team, that they're not as good. Just objectively speaking, Florida State are now 14 point underdogs against Georgia 14 points okay and if, 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 if Alabama if Alabama wasn't called Alabama and have the if Alabama didn't have the Alabama logo they'd be 15 point underdogs to Michigan Michigan is not white true with Alabama. That is... Alabama suck whoa, Alabama whoa, 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 should whoa, whoa, right. what is what is the spread against Michigan two and a half Michigan's gonna cover that with ease okay. Alabama have so you're space. telling me you're telling me that if it, if Alabama didn't have wasn't didn't have the branding that it has that affected the spread by yeah because all people only think points yeah yeah that's just not true that's yes, just Alabama not true is not two and a half points less than Michigan Alabama should have lost to Auburn Alabama's quarterback is horrible that's not Jalen Milrow is decent um I, okay but like you're making that up completely you're saying that Mich- that Alabama would be 14 point underdogs against Michigan First of all, it would be there is no dogs as Florida State would be to Georgia. No, they wouldn't. That's that's just not true. That's just not true. <laughs> like, okay, does, I'm not saying Alabama's had a great season, but to say that like they would be 14 point underdogs. First of all, there is no correlation between. Yeah, you can kind of say this about the committee at times, to be fair, but you can't say that it's just not true to say that brand recognition is correlated with better with sports books favoring you more. That's not true at all. The sports books are not yeah, like that at all. The... 
I, I mean, but, but, but betters might, betters yeah. might change, betters might a little bit, but in but Michigan also has a very big, uh, it also has very big brandings like Alabama does, but th- that's branding never affects lines that much. That's just not correct. Um, I think Michigan covers the spread. I agree. I'm not, I think Michigan is better than Alabama. Um, I, I think we're getting away from the point. The point that I'm making is, and I do, and I am sympathetic to all of the pro Florida state people and all the full, all of the pro Florida state people are correct to some degree, all of the pro Florida state people. The problem is they only respond to this with sympathy for Florida state and Florida State's resume without ever dealing with what the committee is saying or what we're saying. That's the problem. None of the pro Florida State people are are, are doing that. Um, and ultimately, or, or dealing with the committee's reasoning or that, or just recognizing the fact that all of these decisions were bad. The whole situation is bad. Leaving out Alabama would have been bad. Leaving out Texas would have been bad. Leaving out Florida State because Jordan Travis got hurt would have been bad. It all it, it's all bad. Nobody's saying that that like Florida State deserves to be out or anything like that. But deserves got nothing to do with it. Um, a huge part of the rankings, and everybody knows this, is also judging who the best teams are and who is capable of actually competing. Um, Florida State obviously right now is not uh I, I mean like jordan travis getting injured changes the whole thing i mean i don't understand how people are on the pro florida state side are looking at this and just ignoring that whole aspect of it as if this is simply just I, I don't get me wrong i do feel bad for florida state but this is not just some type of bullshit committee corruption thing it is not okay it is just recognizing the reality the very unfair reality that they're not the same team and right now they stink without their quarterback compared alabama to what they stink were. too alabama needed a prayer to beat auburn alabama beat south florida by 10 points alabama stink too i mean if alabama if alabama and florida first of all alabama does not stink alabama just beat georgia okay it was the worst game I- georgia's played in four years right Okay, exactly. Georgia, wait, wait, what did you say? I didn't hear you. It's the worst game Georgia's played in four years. Okay, but like the point is they beat Georgia. Georgia hasn't played, Georgia hasn't lost a game in two years. They went two, almost three full seasons without losing, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, two years. It's been two years. They went two seasons, basically, without losing a game. Obviously, they're going to look at that and that's going to matter. And now you're right, Alabama's, played some bad games they've had some bad wins um that's true about every team florida state ran lsu out of the building i'm not i mean florida state had to escape florida state had to escape against louisville they had to escape they uh they they had to uh who who did they play the week before they had to uh florida but they That's, you're right sorry florida they had they beat okay so they had to escape against louisville uh jack plummer was their quarterback don't don't forget they had to escape against two backup quarterbacks they won the All game sudden, though what they won the games, though. Okay, then that's what you're right. saying about Alabama, though. You're okay. That same thing can be said about Alabama. They beat Alabama's Auburn. lost the game. Who? Okay, so you're you're doing the biggest double standard right now. You're saying right now that Alabama should be left out, and your part of your reasoning is Alabama almost lost to Auburn. Okay, and they but have Alabama a loss. Ignore what Florida and State. And they have a loss. Out. They I mean, have a loss. Alabama. So you're saying that the standard changes just because they have one loss? Yes, because Florida State have no, none. That's ridiculous. So you're saying that part of the reason Alabama should be left out is because they almost lost to Auburn, but not. But it doesn't and matter that they Florida, State State almost Florida, State Florida State almost lost to and almost lost to Louisville against backup quarterbacks, and they couldn't even compete against them. But then they, they don't have a loss. So just because of that, it was a loss that Alabama scheduled, okay? It was a non-conference game. It was a loss in early September against another playoff team. Why are we so okay, paralyzed? Florida State, 
Florida State scheduled LSU and ran them out of the building. They're one of the best teams in the country. Okay. Are you really going to compare LSU and Texas this year? By the way, I agree. I think all of that matters. If everything else was equal and Jordan Travis didn't get injured, I would agree with putting Florida State in over Alabama for that reason. But we also have to recognize the reality that if Florida State had been on their on their uh, on their uh, had Tate Rotemaker as their quarterback all year, they probably are not doing that. And the committee is just recognizing that very basic reality. If Alabama played Florida State tomorrow, they would be probably at least two touchdown favorites. That's just a fact that they would likely be two touchdown favorites. And how can you ignore this? Like, okay, you're right. I feel bad for Florida State. We all do. But I think no matter what, there should be some type of baseline level of best and most deserving. In all cases, there needs to be. Otherwise, you know, the system doesn't work. You need some some baseline level of both. I mean, there are te- there have been teams that have been good enough to compete in the playoffs in the past that were that just were unequivocally not deserving enough. This is a team that is deserving enough based on what they've done, but right now is not good enough. Clearly, um, I, I, well, I actually like, don't. Uh, go ahead. Oh, what were you going to say? I was saying I actually don't really feel bad for Florida State because this was actually a better outcome because Florida State, if if you're a fan, Florida State was going to lose to Michigan. We agree on that, right? They were going to lose to Michigan? Well, the way Florida State is now, yeah. If Florida State they have a chance. But now if you're a Florida State fan, you would have lost to Michigan. But now you'll you'll always have that. You'll not, not knowing like, oh, we could have won the national championship. It's, I think that's a better ending than getting beat up by Michigan, honestly. Yeah, but right now they're not thinking of it that way. Right. But in the long run, they'll right always have that. Thinking of it that way. Um, well, I think I mean, they should ultimately, ultimately, the reason I feel bad for Michigan fans is that they had a re- – uh, I'm sorry, Florida State fans is because they had a really good season going. And then right. this thing – and then Jordan Travis getting injured ruined all of it. Um, I don't feel bad for them because I think the committee screwed them. I think the committee did what the committee would normally do. It's just that the committee was never in this type of impossible situation ever before. Part of the reason they wanted to expand the playoffs likely because they, uh, you know, they often, I, I'm, to be completely honest though, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't end up putting them in. Um Partly because you the, the committee typically takes the path of least resistance um, from the public. This was not the path of least resistance. This was a tougher path to take. Um, the easy thing for them to do would have been to leave out Alabama and put in Florida State. That would have been a lot easier for them to do. Um, I think they, it, they did what they purport to do in – you know, if you it, it, what they purport to do in rankings, which is reevaluate teams after quarterbacks or any type of injury happens, which might affect the team later on. Um, and they do this in they do this in basketball, too. Obviously, it's just not a, people don't care as much because it's not as consequential in basketball. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter that much in terms of like where, where exactly you're ranked in the NCAA tournament, for instance. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's a little bit of a different thing. So people don't care about it as much, but the committee is always in football and basketball, at least have always done this. It's just that the committee in this case was unlucky that it involved a top four team. Um, a potent, It was uh, involved a team that was uh, on the cusp of the top four. Um, and all I'm saying is, look, we're not all going to agree on this. All I'm saying is to the Florida state people or the Florida state uh, sympathizers. <laughs> I feel silly saying that. But to all the people, all the Florida State sympathizers, okay, I get what you're saying, but you have to deal with what we're saying and what the committee is saying, which I'm sorry, but most of them are just not doing. Like, it, you have to, you can't just look at the one side of it and not consider the reason that they did it. That's all, like, like you do have to acknowledge that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter now because they're out. So, yeah, I mean, they don't care what we think. Um, but, and I don't really think they have much of a chance against Georgia. Um, but yeah, best teams, all of, look, I'm not saying it's a, 
that the top four playoff teams is just a competition between who most likely to win is. It's not a black or white thing. It's not that. But who's most likely to win an expectation and is not nothing in this whole thing. I mean, like I said, if it was just an expectation, results wouldn't matter. It would just be Vegas betting odds. And nobody wants that. But nobody wants the reverse either. Um, everybody is ultimately ph- philosophically somewhere in the middle when it comes to where the rankings should be. And Florida State fans can't only, I mean, there were literally politicians demanding to see text messages from committee members like, no, that, that about Florida State. First of all, I don't know if any of them know anything about college football or how any of this works. Um, they might, I don't know. Um, but no, nothing to see here at all. Just, you know, demanding that they see politicians, demanding that they see text messages from the committee. Like this was some sort of collusion effort <laughs> to keep out Florida State. I mean, it would I mean, that type of theory would make sense if it involved like some low level school or something. But it, I could see this being sort of like a, a UCF thing. I mean, have you seen the uh, age of the people on the committee? Also, I don't even know if they know what a text message is. Yeah. Um, I I think the problem with the committee is now I am, I have very mixed views of the committee. Uh, I think they make a lot of mistakes, although they often, I I think sometimes they get flack from people who don't understand how it works often. And sometimes they get it right. Like they're often accused of SEC bias or whatever. I think that's very overstated. The SEC just happens to be very good. Um, And even the people who claim SEC bias will acknowledge the SEC is really good. Um, I I think that the biggest, the weirdest thing about the committee is that they're not full-time college football people. Like none of them are full-time employees. They're part-timers. I I, like, it, it just, I don't know how dedicated any of them realistically are to deciding, you know, who the best team to ranking these teams. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Well, they made the decision now, so it's uh, got to go with it and wait for uh, New Year's Day. Yeah. Um. So there's lots of uh, it, weird, weird stuff going on. Uh, but it's almost the Army Navy game. Um. I, I can't believe the regular season of college football is over. Uh, I mm. kind of, to be, to be, to make a confession, I kind of hate the army Navy game. Uh, yeah. I didn't watch it. Uh, hold on a second. I kind of, because it, it's not, it, it, the main reason that I hate the army Navy game is that it is a reminder that the regular season of college football is completely over. Uh, and, you know, that's in, I mean, I love bowl season, of course, but it's just a reminder that the whole thing is over. Um, so do you know what, do you know what the spread is? I think it's two and a half. It's well, now it's three. Hmm. Navy is getting three. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to go with Navy, but I feel, I don't feel good about it. Yeah. I'll take Navy. They always win normally. Yeah. Well, well, they're they're getting three points at home, so. Yeah, well, there's not it's it's at neutral site, but yeah. I'm sorry, you're right. It's it's not you're right. It's at a neutral site. It's I'm, in I'm, Fox I was, Fox. Um. All right, so there, I mean, neither, sometimes it's a little bit entertaining just to watch. Like, but I mean, honestly, the most entertaining part is the over under. You know what the over under is? Twenty seven no. and a half. Yeah, I'll bet the over probably. Um, I don't know. I think I might go under. The, the game went over last year. Yeah, that sounds that sounds horrible though to root for a twenty seven over under. Yeah. Um, okay. So did you see this Joe Beningo Robert Sala stuff? Yeah. This. Uh... So this Joe Beningo Robert Sala stuff. Uh, basically, if you don't know what happened. Joe Beningo was is good friends with Robert Sala, apparently. Um, I didn't know this. And basically, Robert Sala sent him some text messages about, I don't know, all this. Other stuff. coaches' records. Right, coaches' records and all that stuff. 
Um, and Joe Beningo, who apparently is retired, but is still going on the fan regularly. Mm -hmm. He read those text messages on the air. Yeah. Which <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. This is just really strange. Maybe Robert Sala was trying to confide in Beningo because, uh, you know, he's on, he's on the radio occasionally and wanted to, wanted the public to be more sympathetic to him. Yeah. Um, I, this is uh this sound, I don't know how you read it, but like Robert Sala was texting, uh, Robert Sala was texting, uh, basically other coaches records when they've lost their quarterback was one of the things he was texting. Uh, I don't know. This seems like a move of a guy who knows that the ship is basically about to sink and is just really desperate. Like, I think that Robert Sala might feel like maybe his days are numbered in uh, East Rutherford. Well, every, every head coach's days are numbered. His days are numbered, obviously. Um, I think the thing that he's, doing is trying to get the public to be more sympathetic to him and to be honest i think even though it's a little weird that he did that i mean unless he's close to beningo and we don't know it or whatever um but the thing is is that he's got a point like it is weird that he texted beningo all that stuff but the thing is he like i said he does have kind of a point <laughs> like like you can't expect a, a head coach to win without a quarterback Look how bad Belichick is without a quarterback. Like, it, yeah. nobody could do a good job without a quarterback. It's just a fact. Um, sometimes it's like expecting a coach, uh, you know, a, a pilot to land a plane with no wings. I mean, it, he is right. Every head coach is bad without a quarterback. That's just a fact. Um, I think New York fans don't always want to hear it, but it's objectively just true. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just the season's just uh, a complete derailment now. I mean, it's unbelievable. You got you've got uh, Zach Wilson. Obviously, there's a story early in the week that Zach Wilson didn't want to go back to quarterback, and now they've gone from Zach Wilson to uh, or sorry, from Zach Will from Rogers. He obviously got hurt. Now to Zach Wilson, and put Zach Wilson down to the third string. And now start him. By the way, if you started, if you were going to start him the next week, why would you put Trevor Simeon in the game for that last drive? But uh, um, yeah, it's they, they've really just is become a dumpster fire now. It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. It, 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 obviously, it is. Um, it. it uh, I think that the weirdest part of this story is Beningo reading those texts live on air uh without sala's permission yeah that's crazy that's a crazy thing i mean even if i were showing a text if you texted me something and i wanted to show it to somebody else i would always ask permission to show somebody else this text let alone le reading it live on air on a right. radio show and why would you do that also he might like burn a bridge like why would sala ever text him like anything like Again, not like that, but like anything important again, because if he could fear that he reads his own air or anything, like you could you could fuck up like your sources and stuff like that, doing stuff like that, like yeah, it make uh, any it, sense. Yeah, it, it's it, it's just a stupid, it's a stupid idea. It, it's just a really stupid idea. Um, it, it it's just I I don't know if it ever like I don't know why he would do that. He just. I don't know. All... Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, so I don't know. It, it's the Jets are just in a terrible situation. Uh, it's it feels over, but you know what? It's like Rogers is still coming back next year. Um, I think Joe Douglas does, and we talked about this last week. Joe Douglas deserves more blame than Robert Sala does. Um. I mean, it's not like Robert Sala took over a really good team and now they stink. They were a dumpster fire already. Uh, it, I mean, it, I, I don't really see coaching as that big of a problem here. Um, it, it, I, I mean, obviously, he's not a great head coach. Look, look, he might not be that – maybe he's not a good head coach. I don't know. But the the point is, is that Rodgers is coming back next year, and I think 
most Jet fans might actually see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it doesn't feel as hopeless as it used to. Yeah, but uh, next year it'll be Rodgers last year likely. So at the end of that, if they don't win the Super Bowl, they might clean the whole house. Yeah, or, you know, if they don't – who knows what might happen. There's all sorts of just terrible scenarios that that could potentially happen with the Jets. Um, yeah, that, that's just – a really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you're right, though. I, I don't think Salah's ever going to want to send him. It, 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 he he may have thought he was like venting to a friend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he may have he may have thought that. Um, it, it may have been the most, uh, you know, the least cynical thing that he was trying to do, and he just reads all of that live on air. <laughs> it's 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 a pretty unbelievable thing. Right. Like a lot of people have texted their friends like, oh, you know, work was horrible today. Like this job fucking sucks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I could imagine that he would like show it to the boss. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, All right. uh, Hold on a second. Uh, By the way, uh, we could have used Flacco. Yeah, he wasn't bad the other on, on he, You know, we could have, although with his time on the Jets, he was really bad. Um, he, was horrible, he, he seemed yeah. like he didn't care, but he's not so bad with the Browns. No, and that was only his first game. <laughs> he just got um, to the team. All right, so we're, we're going to make some picks. Uh, I'll let you go first. Bills at Chiefs, minus one and a half. Yeah, uh, Chiefs. I, this is easy to me. I don't really understand this line chiefs i know they lost last weekend but they were on the road at the in green bay tough place to play chiefs i i got them beating the bills and uh obviously we had an odd story today where uh, sean mcdormand was trying to uh, fire up the team or whatever he was doing and wanted to talk about them being more uh having a little bit more chemistry and being more coordinated and uh so he used an example, and the example he used was uh, Al Qaeda on September 11th uh, to point to somebody who was organized and uh, got the job done. So that was a uh, odd uh, situation there. The, the, that sounds like a very football guy thing to say. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. Like, just not thinking about anything else besides that. Like, I mean, but I mean, like, okay, I guess technically that's true. But it's like nobody wants to be like, oh, I'm the hijacker on 9-11. That's what I'm doing. Right. Yeah. That's... <laughs> like, I don't think anybody – I mean, uh, like, all right, technically that's true. Um, it would be kind of like saying I want, you go- I want you to be a leader in the clubhouse, like Hitler was a leader. It's like, okay, that's technically not wrong, but why are, why, why are you right. making that comparison? <laughs> right, yeah. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a tone deaf, like very, very like, yeah, guy that only cares about football. And nothing else in life, but uh, I, I, but yeah, I, I the Chiefs are a better team than the Bills. I don't. I mean, don't you the think you could have like, like used something like I don't know the Manhattan Project or something? Could have used I don't, or I don't know anything else in the world. Could use another football team, like yeah, you could have used an, which is a, which is a much more apt comparison, by the way. I mean, how can football players compare themselves to like I don't know terrorists? There was a uh, there was a football guy story by by the way I heard this on the uh, podcast Bussing with the Boys that the um, the Arizona State special teams coach he used to coach a high school in Scottsdale Arizona and uh, he was he told a story about how he was out at the park with his dog like playing fetch and the dog just collapsed and died and uh, the, he was like the reason he told the story to the players was like he was like everything you do do it until you fail like until you fail out like do it to the max like what an insane story to tell like. Uh, <laughs> players it's like yeah like you should be like this dog who ran and played fetch and then just died like just play till the end <laughs> like <laughs> like what well, coaches are like not real at sometimes yeah that, that's i i mean that that almost sounds like a jim harbaugh story it really does yeah that's a very hard really, story it really does sound like a harbaugh thing like, remember <laughs> he said remember jim, remember jim harbaugh said that he didn't want players who eat chicken because it's a scared bird yeah um I've never communicated with chickens. Um, I assume they're scared, but I think they're scared for a good reason because they're probably going to yeah, get um, killed. Right. <laughs> like, but I mean, it, you don't inherit the emotions of an of the animal that you eat. Are right. cows not scared? Like, are they just bold? Right. Like, <laughs> like, 
I don't know. That that's yeah. All, all of this stuff is just really bizarre, and I don't know why anybody would make those. Com I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's kind of funny, um, but a little nuts. Um, mm. He, I don't know if he. This is like this might be worse than like the never forget parlay on DraftKings. I mean, that was fine, but I, I don't even think this is that bad. Like, because he did it to an internal team. Like, I don't really know if that's like to the team. They said the True. team was it's joking. Not, it's not like you said it publicly. Right, right. But what? So, uh, so apparently it was on a 2021 team meeting. That's what, that's what yeah. allegedly, ha apparently happened. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how bad it is. And, and by the way, that was one of their best seasons. So. Yeah, maybe the 9-11 comparisons are good. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm taking the uh, the Chiefs here. Minus one and a half. I think that's an easy bet. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I, I actually agree with you on this. Um, the Chiefs are the home team. They're uh, they're only giving one and a half. Yeah, I would go with the, I would go with the Chiefs too, probably. Um all right, I'm taking one. Dolphins at Titans. I'm not sure if it's 13 and a half or 13, uh, depending on where it's uh, – on, yeah. on the ESPN app, it says – on the ESPN app, it says uh, 13 and a half. On DraftKings, it's – hold on a second. Okay, on DraftKings – okay, I'll say 13. Okay, on DraftKings, it's 13 and a half. So, uh, obviously, I like the Dolphins. Uh, the Titans stink. The Dolphins can blow out pretty much anybody just from the fact that they score so many points. I mean, they, they have one of the best offenses in the NFL, um, a, a very high powered offense, and they can they can blow out pretty much. They can they can blow out like whenever they play teams that aren't good, they blow them out. Um, it, 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 they're not. They're not like teams. Like they don't play down to their. The Dolphins don't play down to their opponents. Um, they beat the last two games. They beat the Jets by twenty one, and the Commanders by thirty. So yeah, I mean the only the the, the Raiders game was somewhat close, um, and then they beat the they beat the Patriots by two touchdowns. All that. Uh, whenever they play against a team that isn't good, you can count on them to like blow them out Especially yeah this is another tough game this is another tough game for the the dolphins they've really had a tough schedule this year they're going to actually round it out with uh vanderbilt and then don bosco prep in the next game the way their schedule is going yeah it's the easiest NFL history well they're i mean they do have to play the bills in the they, they do i mean their schedule is going to get a lot tougher can't get much easier well they're, they're mm -hmm. playing the cowboys the Ravens and the Bills hmm. at the end of the season. I mean, those are three. The, the, the end of their yeah, season is a gauntlet. Yeah, good. Well, they played nobody up till now. So, well, so far their schedule hasn't been very strong, obviously, but the, the end of it is a gauntlet. Um, I mean, they, they should kill the Jets. They should kill the Titans. Um, yeah, they should. I mean, the, their problem is their defense, but their offense can make up for it, kind of. Um, at least against teams that aren't good. Um, they, they are nine and three. And it's like, I don't think, I, I guess we'll see how it works out at the very end of their schedule, but I don't know. It could be, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for them. Um, but it seems like, I mean, the bills are having such an off year. Yeah. Uh, it seems like they could, uh, they're, they're, they're favorites to win the division. Um, Definitely. okay. So you took bucks at Falcons. Falcons yeah, I took the Falcons. Half. Yeah, Falcons minus one and a half. Yeah, Falcons, not a good team. Bucks, really not a good team. Somebody has to win this division, unfortunately. I think it's going to be the Falcons. Buccaneers, not a good team. That's all basically I have. The Bucks aren't that good. Yeah. Lost. They got close with Carolina last weekend. So, Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, so oh, hold on a second. I have the wrong thing up here. What was that? Uh, okay, so I took the Colts. Uh, okay, so the Colts and Bengals. Hold on a second. 
Uh, hold on a second. Let me pull this up. The okay. One. Uh, sorry. Uh, Colts and Bengals. One. In, uh, Cincinnati is giving one and a half against the Colts. Uh, I like. I like the Colts. Uh, the Colts are an amazing. First of all, the Bengals are on their. The Bengals are on their backup quarterback. Joe Burrow was completely out. It was great last week. What's that? Jake Browning was great last week against he the was, Jaguars. But it's I, I could I know Jake Browning was great last week, but I mean it, it's I, I feel like it's going to be a letdown game for them. Um, also, the Colts are an amazing road team. Uh, they're like for some weird reason they're terrible at home and just amazing on the road. Um, so I don't I, I don't think Jake Browning I don't think the Bengals are good, are going to be able to keep winning with Jake Browning as their quarterback. Uh, I, something tells me it's going to be a letdown game for them. The only thing I have on this game is it's sad to me that quarterbacks that I, when I was a freshman in college, Jake Browning was the the, the quarterback of uh, Washington. It's sad that like quarterbacks that were uh, playing when we were in college are now like the NFL veterans almost. Like well, the I wouldn't NFL. say they're veterans, but you, we're they're old enough to be like, determined let, let, let's put it this way i wouldn't say they're veterans necessarily but they're they've been in the league long enough that we know what they are yeah exactly but like we know they're backup quarterbacks you can be like we know that they're deemed busts or or franchise quarterbacks or whatever uh yeah i, I agree with you completely it's it makes, yeah it makes you feel old i saw I, I it makes you feel old I, when i was a, when i was a sophomore uh Texas Tech came here and Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback. That's how long ago I was, which feels like you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, well, I'll always think of Jake Browning as, no matter what, I'll always think of Jake Browning as the Washington quarterback. He'll never be yeah, exactly. the Bengals quarterback to me. I'll always primarily think of him as the Washington guy. Agreed. Yeah, it's similar to how I'll always think of Cardell Jones as the Ohio State quarterback. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, not point. that he did much in the NFL, but <laughs> like, no. I think that, to be fair, I think that's true of most people, come to think of it. He's the Ohio State guy. I don't think anybody thinks of him as the Bills but I mean, that would be like thinking of Michael Jordan as a Wizards player. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I really I really like the Colts this game. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we could have had Gardner Minshew. Um, yeah, you know, they could have Yeah. But uh, oh, all right, so you do have one more that you want to do. Yeah, this is uh, uh, this might be like one, my biggest wager of the season so far on this game. I think the Cowboys are going to destroy the Eagles. I think the Eagles are had had a gauntlet schedule. They're going to be tired. They were tired last week. They got killed by the 49ers. Uh, Jalen Hurts did get injured a little bit. Cowboys should have beat him the first time. I think the Cowboys kill them. I might, I might go to DraftKings and put an alternate line like Cowboys minus seven on this. I think the Cowboys are going to murder them. You know what? I understand where you're coming from with this. Um, I, I think that this feels a little bit like a trap. Um, I don't know if it's as much of a trap as it was necessarily because it was. Uh, as it was last week. Um, this feels a little bit like a trap though. You're, you're right. Um, the Eagles, the, the only question I have a little bit is like, I don't, the Eagles might be due for a bounce back game. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I, I don't know if I'd put any real money on this. The only thing that worries me is that extra half a point mm. at three and a half might worry me a little bit, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I, I see, uh, yeah, the thing with, yeah, the Eagles haven't looked as good lately. That's just the basic reality. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the Cowboys could still end up winning the division. Um, They'll take the lead of the division if they win this game. Yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, it's it's going to be tough for the Eagles. I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like. Um, the Eagles have an easier schedule than the Cowboys going down, but yeah. Um, okay, so I, I'm also take so there. There's one more game: Rams at Ravens minus seven and a half. I'm taking the Rams. Um, I, I wouldn't take them to win outright, 
Well, seven. It's seven and a half. I'm taking them to cover. I'm not taking them. Game? What? What time is the game? It is at one o'clock. Yeah, no, I never. West Coast team and on on the East Coast, I don't know about that. Well, I, I think the Ravens are good enough to at least keep it close. I'm sorry, the Rams, the Rams. are good enough. To, the Rams are good. En- they're both our teams. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the Rams are good enough to at least keep it close uh, and keep it within seven. Within the um, number, yeah. I, 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 right. All I'm saying is, I think they can keep it within the number. I like the Rams to be able to do it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, look, the Ravens are good, but I think the Rams, when they, I think that the Rams, when they want to, can compete with the Ravens. Uh, like, I don't, like, I think they, I think the Rams are going to keep this game a little closer than people, than we think. Uh, did, did you, yeah, you did all three. Mm-hmm. I did all three too. Okay. Uh, okay. So I do want to get into this Woj Dylan Harper story. Mm-hmm. Um, you can explain it a little bit. Yeah. So Dylan Harper is the number two. I think he's number two. I know he's not number one. He's not the number two uh, recruit of the class of uh, the latest 2024 basketball cl- recruiting class. And uh, he's from Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey. His brother went to. Uh, his brother, Ron Harper, was the star of Rutgers, and uh, Dylan Harper is committing to Rutgers, which is was expected, but uh, normally the commitment's done on TV. The guy picks the two hats and does it however he wants to do it. Uh, Woj tweeted it out last night um, without uh, permission from Dylan Harper, and there's been a lot of blowback, especially from college bas- current college basketball players. Um about this. And I, I kind of agree. This is like the biggest, one of the biggest moments of this kid's life so far. And yeah. uh, Woj completely stepped on his toes. Yeah. Uh, I agree completely. He, you don't release information like this without their permission. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what this is other than a desire to just be first and report it. Um yeah, I, I don't know where this came from, but if you're a reporter like Woj is, you don't want like bad blood with players and players' families, right? But like, it, like the motivation, like, was the motivation for him to actually be first on this story so great that? Uh, I think I think these guys are uh, these guys are robots like uh, Woj, Shams, Schefter. Like, I don't know if you remember, but like. When Dwayne Haskins died, Schefter like tweeted about like it was like oh the uh, Dwayne Haskins who struggled in Washington and stuff like these guys are like just robots I think and I think Dylan Harper ta- uh, Dylan Harper yeah. did tell Woj, but uh, I think he was just like oh I, I have to tweet out like and I think also the yeah, Woj so, shot. So you're saying so yeah Dylan Harper must have told him and then he did he, he talked to him but he didn't yeah. say to to put it out before he could have put it out yeah. the second that the kid did it. But right, right, to do exactly. It the kid did it is, yeah. Well, you know. so basically, Dylan Harper was entrusting him. Yeah, I mean, it was expect. It was the expected decision. His brother was the star of right. Rutgers, and he's. It was the. This was the expected decision, but still, it's it's over yeah. the top. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's just. It, it's a sort of a betrayal of. It's it's sort of a betrayal of trust. Um. I, I mean. It, it, but like you would think, I don't know. It's just sort of like he should probably. But wouldn't he want to like care about his reputation a little more? Well, I think he cares about like he did a lot of it with clicks and 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 like internet traffic. That's why they do it. But they do this with the. Um, I mean, it's a little bit different. But like the draft, the NBA draft, like you don't have to watch anymore because they tweet out the picks like hours before they happen. Now, my favorite um, thing is when is is like when people make the fake Woads Twitter accounts. Yes. And troll yeah. people. <laughs> yes. Um, um, well, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. You do make me think of the Adam Schefter thing. And I guess it makes sense that they're robots. I mean, I guess the best insiders have to be robots to some degree. Yeah. Like, I guess they're just on their phones constantly. They're trying to get the next scoop. Um, and I, I guess that there is a real business to it, to being an insider. Um, and yeah, and it takes I, I, it, it and I think that man. that's just what it takes to be a good insider is to be a robot. Yeah, I agree. But it, it takes like with with the um, 
with the uh, uh, like amount of people that are online now, and, and Woj obviously has like millions of followers between all these platforms. Like it, it took away like the whole point of him committing because he doesn't. Why even do the commitment anymore? Because everyone already knew. Like, right, it right. Was, it was, that was that was the problem. Like it's 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 different than like the draft picks because they're going to take the draft pick. But like this was like a big moment. So yeah, and, and he completely ruined it for him. Uh, yeah, it, it was. You talk about uh, you talk. We were talking about earlier how I felt old. D- Dylan Harper was born in two thousand six. <laughs> He's yeah. about to be in college. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I, I've That's met insane. Ron Harper when I was a really little kid. I did his basketball camp. The uh, the the older Ron Harper, not uh, Ron Harper. Jr. Right, right. The older Ron Harper, like the the Ron Harper that played on the Bulls. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think he remembers me. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. but I remember he told me that I was like, I, I think I kept doing this drill wrong. And I think it was. Yeah, the, the maybe does, so maybe he does remember. Was, me. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. At the time he was like, I think I was I think I was doing the drill wrong, but I was like 10 or 11 years old. Um, so I think I can cut myself some slack. Yeah, that was uh, that was a while ago. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, you do have a story that you want to talk about. Yeah, I do have a story. Um, I'm out here in Arizona. Obviously, I went to Arizona State, so I'm a big fan. And uh, so while I'm out here, I've been going to every basketball game. And uh, last night we played SMU. I went to the game. Arizona State was not good. Couldn't rebound. Couldn't uh, couldn't do anything. Couldn't make threes. SMU took a 14-point lead or a 13-point lead with about 10 minutes left and uh, I left the game and started to go home and uh, I, I had actually bet on SMU and uh, I was checking my betting account and the money wasn't getting into the uh, account. So I was confused and I saw that at maybe about a minute after I left ASU went on a 21 to three run, uh, won the game, insane game. Uh, I felt bad. The, the biggest reason I felt bad as well. And the first thing I thought of, was like across the court, I was on the left side, and then across the other end of the court, there was an SMU fan who was just a complete asshole, and he was standing up at every at every bucket and like gesturing toward the ASU fans, and like when they would hit a three, he was doing like an archer move. It would have been awesome to see that guy while ASU went on the the uh, twenty one to three run. But I am a uh, I so I'm upset that I missed the comeback and stuff like that. But I'm I'm a lever of if my team's down, I I, I leave. Like you're a lever. I I am the I am not a lever. Um, I rarely it, it is. I went to the Jets Chargers game. I stayed till the very end. Really? That's how dedicated I am. And by the way, I I don't necessarily recommend that to most people. Um, I think it depends on a lot of things. I think that once I'm not saying it's never okay to leave and try to beat the traffic or whatever. Um, but I think there's a lot of things like if you have children with you, for instance, and they have to get to bed, I can kind of understand that a little more as opposed yeah. to like, you didn't have to leave. You just gave up. Right. Well, it, it adversely, I, I went to, that was a Monday night, that charge game. I went to a Monday night giant Seahawks game at week three and uh, Daniel Jones threw a pick six to make it 21 to three with, I think about a minute left in the third quarter, and I was I was on the the train back to New York before the fourth quarter even started. Yeah, um, like I, I I think I well, like I don't want to watch like my team just get like destroyed. Nobody does. No, nobody wants to see that. Um, I am more along. I am usually the type of person who says, "Okay, I want to get my money's worth. I'm going to stay." I think that's what how a lot of people feel. Um, one time when I was a little, when I was 13 years old, I think I went to a wizards game. Um, and this was when John wall was like, I think it was his rookie season. And if you don't remember at the time, the wizards were really bad and the wizards, uh, they had a tradition at that stadium where everybody stands until the wizards score their first basket. And my God, people were standing for like the first five minutes of the game. <laughs> like They were just so bad at the time. And I, I remember uh, they, there was, it was like, a, there was like a really close game. It was like a tied game with like 26 seconds left or something like that. And there are these people 
a few rows ahead of us that left. It was like the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. They were leaving with like 26 seconds left in the game. Uh, I, I thought that was the strangest thing. Um, but no, from my experience, I've usually been the one to stay for a long time. Um, unless, of course, there's a reason that you have to leave. You might have to. Um, it also depends on how you're getting back. Um, in your case, you were in Arizona. That's not quite like being in New York where you have to beat the traffic. Um, the traffic could be so bad that it's just, it might not. I can understand why you think it might not be worth it to stay too long. But with the cost of tickets sometimes, uh, and sometimes like, I think, I think a lot of people feel like they don't get their money. Excuse me. I feel like a lot of people think they don't get their money's worth if they don't stay the whole game. Yeah. I mean, I said, in my, in my case, it was a completely blowout. I'm staying right on the campus. I'm, I'm right by the arena. I wasn't, was, I think also like if you're going somewhere, like maybe after the game. So how, how long was the walk back from the stadium? five minutes okay then that's a really bad excuse was, no, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't do anything they, they 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 couldn't rebound at all they couldn't hit a three it was it was it was unfathomable to think they, they had any chance to come back in the game oh but but the thing is though you were so basically the whole how do i say this uh all of the surrounding circumstances for in your case were a reason to stay you're indoors, first of all. Um, you're yeah. not driving back. There's no traffic or anything. You're just walking on campus, which generally is very pleasant. Um, the weather is nice. It's not like you're. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not like you're. You know, you're out in the cold or anything like that. Actually, not that that makes that much of a difference, but you get the point. Everything right. was a reason. In your case, everything was a reason to stay. Like it, it was like all of the mitigating circumstance, all of the circumstances surrounding your situation would lead to yeah. me saying you should stay. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. And I was, and I was going, I was going home after, like, I could see it. I agree. Like I could see if you're like going to a bar or something after, like I'll, I'll leave, like get a, a quick start or whatever. Like a lot, a lot of people like ASU football games, a lot of kids will leave at halftime because they're going to a party or a club or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, it was, it was uh it was it was inexcusable. I'm also a quick. I don't know. I think you're you're. I think you're also because I watched a jet game at your house against the Cowboys where they got killed, and we watched basically the whole game. I'm also a quick uh, turn the game off if the team's getting beat uh, as well. Like I, I've probably turned off like every giant game. Like I, I'm, I'm quick to turn the game off if the team's getting beat. I'm, I'm not. I'm not a quick turn the game off guy. I'm a quick. No, I was gonna say you're you keep it on because we watched that Giants uh, Jet Cowboy game that was out of hand from the first quarter, and we watched the entire game. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not like that. We watched the entire game. Um, although to be fair, the giant game that was also on, it wasn't. Yeah. Or, or was was that the game they beat the Cardinals? It was when they came know. back and beat the Cardinals. That was another game I I, I didn't watch because they were down like 30 points right away. They come back and win. But uh, yeah, yeah it's I watch no, I watch the Jet games in full. I don't even watch them all live because I'm sleeping when a lot of them take place. Right, right, but. Um, but yeah, I, I, I no, I'm, I'm a quick shutter off, and then uh, I, I, I'm very like Frank the Tank kind of outlook on uh, on my teams. Like, no, I'm, but the I'm, thing I'm, is, I'm you have a good reason to be a Frank. The, like, the problem with Frank the Tank is that like he's kind of right. He just stretches the truth a little bit. He would say the Mets are not going to win another game, and it's like right. when you say things like that, you you know it's obviously not true. It, it would be like if right. I talk, if I have a cynical view of somebody, and I said this guy's a jerk. Uh, he's going to screw you over in a bunch of ways. You might listen to that. But if I say, and he also killed Kennedy, it would be like, right, okay, right, I know right. he didn't kill Kennedy. I can't take you seriously. Like, that's basically what Frank the Tank is like. His whole thing is like, he says these things that are true, kind of, like they, that have some truth to them. And he just stretches it to such a ridiculous proportion that people don't take him seriously. Um, it, but his general point might be well taken. Right. Um yeah. It, well, it, it, well, my thing is, I watch the Jets lose all the time. I'm kind of used to it. I never turn the game off. I'm just that loyal. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's. I, I agree. I also have like superstitious. Like, if, if I don't want, I feel like I sometimes I feel like if I leave, like I feel like if I left, like maybe there's a chance. I feel like if the, if I shut it off, okay, maybe there's a chance. Like, I get superstitious like that. 
Um, well, do, do you think maybe the reason that the the do you think maybe the reason ASU went on the run that they did is because you left? It's possible, but in, in I, that I think case, maybe you're probably. a hero. Yeah, exactly. I I, I texted. Uh, I texted our uh, friend Dave Herman. I told him uh, that Bobby Hurley should give me the game ball for uh, <laughs> for sparking him up by leaving. But yeah, I, but but I, I I'm I don't know if you're the same way, but I'm extremely superstitious. Like ASU had a win streak one year, and I walked like during the first game of the win streak, I'd walked up somewhere in New York, and uh, so then once the win streak started, I had to walk like that same exact route while the while the game was on because I was like the, they won when I walked this route, so I'll walk the route again. Like I, I'm extremely superstitious. I, I am not superstitious. Um, not at least not in this regard. Um, the, the reason I think the biggest reason I'm not superstitious when it comes to sports is because it's occurred to me. And I think all superstitious sports, are, sports fans should think, okay, has it occurred to you that every other fan of both teams is doing the same thing? Yeah, of course. And it, and it occurs <laughs> to me that we, we had when, when the giants, so the giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So if you remember that the first time, if you remember that it was 14 to 10, Patriots and the Giants went on a run where they had the David Tyree catch and threw it to Plaxico Burris. We were watching it at my uncle's house, and my cousin was in the kitchen bathroom. There's like a bathroom kitchen area that's away from the living room. We're watching the game when the Giants scored the touchdown, and then the Patriots got the ball. And we told her she could not come out of where she was until the game was over because she was in there when the Giants scored the touchdown. And we were like, you cannot come out of this area like until – and she had to like peek her head like – very slightly over the wall. Well, it's walls. like in that scene. It's like in a Bronx Tale when Sonny puts everybody in the bathroom. Yeah, when they're playing traps. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he blamed he blamed everybody else. Um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I, I think I think superstition in sports is very silly, but also very funny and relatable. Well, yeah, like I was gonna say, like obviously, like if you if you uh, if you um. If you take an overview, like obviously a game that's happening in Arizona is not going to be affected by a girl in Staten Island standing in a kitchen. Like, obviously, <laughs> yeah. And nobody and takes it also, seriously. But by the way, yeah. in, in casinos, craps is a very suspicious game. Superstitious. Um, superstitious. Superstitious. Sorry. Yeah. Superstitious. I can't talk. Um, like if, you know, if God forbid the dice rolls off the table or something like that, or if somebody walks up to the table that isn't playing – one time we were in Atlantic City and I was going on a pretty good roll. Mm-hmm. I turn around, I see you, and right away I roll a seven. Yeah. <laughs> like that ruined it. Yeah. There was yeah, there's 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 a ton of superstitions of crap. Like like there is that. There's like if a guy comes to the table that was like unlucky or or yeah. um didn't didn't like your your I think your your uh, your dad has a story where like he had bet on a team I think he bet on uh, someone who was playing Miami and then someone oh, came to the Miami. Right. My first. dad bet on. I think he bet. It was this was a few years ago. This was the day I saw a guy die in the casino. Um, he bet on Flor. No, I think he bet on Miami versus Florida. Um, this was the same day Andrew Luck retired. Mm-hmm. Um and. We were at the we we were at the table, and there was a guy there with a Florida hat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I think that's what did it. Yeah, that 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 like I I I'm I'm a, but yeah I'm a huge like superstitious and I'm a, I'm a big like like I know that doesn't affect me. I'm a big yell at the TV guy too like like even though I know the guy can't. That's hear just me. called venting. Yeah. But all okay. right. Um, all right, so thanks for li- thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be back next week. Um, that this is uh, moving the goalposts.